Luke chapter 17, verse 11 says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Verse 17 says, Jesus answered <clears throat> and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? I want to ask the question, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much today for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We're grateful for the opportunity to be here today. I pray that you would bless our time together, Lord. I pray that you would minister and speak truth to us. Let, let me be a mouthpiece for just a few moments, Father. Give, give us insight into what you would have us apply to our lives. I thank you again for your loving kindness and the multitude of your mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you sit down, tell your neighbor, I hope you ain't one of the nine. I want to recognize Bishop Soli, am I saying that right, from City of Refuge Worship Center in Louisiana now. Stand up, Bishop. God bless you. His daughter and my daughter played basketball together uh, growing up, and uh, we're delighted to see him have him worshiping with us today. Thank you for coming. I want to talk to you narratively tonight, this morning. What time is it? I don't lost some track of time it is. Narratively, so if that, that means, for those of you who don't know, that means if you're looking for me to give you specific points, I'm not giving you points. I'm just going to talk about this story, and you write down whatever the Holy Ghost says to you that applies to you, whatever you hear the Holy Spirit says. So don't wait for me to give you point one, point two, point three. I want to narratively look at this story. I want to look at this story. Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem and determines and passes through the provinces of Samaria and Galilee. He travels through two places that are considered places of rejection. They are places where mixed multitude of people lived. It is a place where people of mixed gender lived. It's the place where those folks who had mixed blood, there was Jews, Jewish blood mixed in with other blood, Gentile blood, lived in Galilee and in Samaria. And it is in this place that he stops by, these two places. Galilee is a significant place. It was in fact the, boy, the boyhood home of Jesus. All of the disciples that Jesus ultimately chose were from Galilee except for one. It is in Galilee that Jesus performed 25 of his 33 miracles in Galilee. 19 of his 32 parables were spoken in the backdrop of Galilee. It ultimately becomes the headquarters for his ministry. He, he is passing through these two places of rejects, where rejects abide. The thing that I love about God is he loves to go to places where rejects are. He likes to go to places that nobody puts high on the map. He, likes to, he, he makes it his business to go and find himself at a situation where there are those who have been forgotten and pushed to the side. He made it his business to go through these areas and while he's there, he f goes through a village that is unnamed. It is an unnamed place. It just tells us in the scripture that he went through a particular village, a certain village, and there he came across these 10 lepers. 
They had a disease called leprosy. It is a disease that caused the skin to lose its pigmentation. It was a disease that was considered in that day to be contagious. Therefore, if you had leprosy, you were not allowed to be around other people. You had to stay separated from the rest of the general population. And so these 10 fellas had hooked themselves together. They couldn't go around the crowd, so they hooked up among themselves. Have you ever noticed that, that, that you will get attracted and people will be attracted to you that got the same drama that, that you have in your life? If you always attracting crazy people, then it might be saying something about you. I ain't getting too many amens on that point right there. These 10 groups of rejects hung out together. They had something in common, this sickness that brought them together. And they were, in fact, these leprous men uh, stood out on the, oftentimes, the outskirts of the city, away from everybody else. But something special happened to them that is recorded here in the Bible. And I love this story because it tells us that there they were minding their business, doing their thing, hanging out among themselves. Verse 12 said that they stood afar off. I wonder how many people we have today who, because of whatever drama they have in their lives, don't feel connected and don't feel plugged in and find themselves standing afar off. These guys stood afar off. Some of you have quietly come to church, but you really haven't gotten plugged in. Others have found themselves not able to get connected in with any kind of particular ministry. Some have just found themselves not feeling certain things. And so in some cases, in some ways, you have felt rejected and afar off. But I got news for you today. God loves to connect with the people who are the, the ones who are the outcast ones. These men in their outcast standing afar off, verse 13 says, I love this, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I like that. It says they begin to open their mouths and cry out to God. I be trying to tell people today that if you want to get God's attention, you better learn how to open up your mouth. One of the dilemmas and the troubles and the trials of our culture and in our community is that we want to pray to God conservatively, but sometimes there comes a moment in your lives where you can't get cute. You got to open up your mouth and cry out to God. Let me tell you something. If the pain gets hard enough, if the drama gets painful enough, if the situation gets bad enough, you will cry out. We shouldn't have to stand up here and beat you and beg you into opening your mouth. We ought to come with our mouth wide open, crying out, saying, Jesus, I need you. Father, I need a helping hand. These men cried out. These men lifted their voices and they cried out to Jesus. And listen to what they said. They said, Jesus. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius. They said, Jesus. They didn't say Pastor Jenkins. They said, Jesus. So many of you are crying out to men for help. Men can't help you. You need to cry out to God. Don't look to human beings for help. You got to look to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and you've got to cry out to Jesus. He's the one that can transform your life. I don't care where you are and what you're situated in. If you cry out to God, and if we cry out your dilemma, he will bring deliverance. Matter of fact, not only did they say Jesus, because some folk just want a Jesus who can be their savior. Some people just want a Jesus who can keep, deliver them from the burning hell. But these fellas were smart enough. They were jacked up. They had disease. They were outcast. But they were smart enough not only to cry out to Jesus, but they were smart enough to call him master. Y'all excuse me for a second. I know I wouldn't get too many amens because a whole lot of y'all haven't called him master yet. You say Jesus, but you haven't said master. You say savior, but you haven't said I'm yielding to everything. I'm not, we haven't gotten to a place where he calls to shot. When they said master, they were in essence identifying the very nature of who he is and what posture that he's in and that they were willing to do whatever they told him to do. And I'm here to tell you today that if you do what Jesus tells you to do, if you're willing to cry out and say master, we must recognize him as master. I love that about this story. They said master. How many people are missing out from God because they refuse to give him 
total control of their lives. What is it that you are holding back from totally giving to God? What's that area? Who's that person? What's that habit? What's that situation? Go on and preach, Pastor. What's that situation in your life that you're holding back? What's that closet that you've left locked and closed? What's that issue that you think you can never get victory over? What is that thing in your life that you haven't opened up the door to and allowed the Lord Jesus to come in and be in charge of? These fellas said, Jesus, master. And then they said something else, have mercy on us. I wonder how many of us realize we need the mercy of God. I know y'all don't know what mercy is, or y'all would have shouted a little bit louder than that. Mercy is when God gives you what you don't deserve. Whether you know it or not, mercy woke you up this morning. Whether you know it or not, mercy kept you on your side of the highway and the other car on its side of the highway. Whether you know it or not, it's mercy that kept you from getting gonorrhea, uh, HIV, syphilis, chlamydia. It was the mercy of God. It's not that you didn't deserve to have cancer. It's not that you didn't deserve to be dead. It's not that you didn't deserve judgment. But in fact, praise be to our God. He's a God who does not give me what I deserve. I deserve hell. I deserve punishment. I deserve to be whipped. I deserve rejection. I deserve don't pass go. I deserve not to have any kind of goodness at all. But thanks be to God, he has been better to me than I've been to myself. And I thank him he gave us mercy. Hallelujah. You know what I thank God for? He not only gave me mercy, he gave us tender mercies. When I woke up this morning, he gave me mercy that I'm going to need to make it through today. I need mercy. And he gave me enough mercy to sustain me through my day. Thank God for his mercy. The Bible says morning by morning, new mercies he gives. These are not rehashed mercies. He didn't reach into the past and drag some, used, some old used up mercy. He woke me up with a fresh batch of mercy. And I don't know where y'all are, but I thank him for a fresh batch of mercy. You see, some of you think that God must do something spectacular for you in order for you to give him a testimony or in order for you to praise him or in order for you to give him a dance or a shout. But I'm here today to tell you just the fact that he woke me up this morning and gave me mercy. Oh, I wish I had a praying crowd with me today. I wish I had somebody to help me give God a shout and praise. I wish I had somebody here today to say, God, I thank you for mercy. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for the doors that you opened. Thank you that I still have a roof over my head. Thank you that I have clothes on my back. Thank you that I've got food to eat. Thank you for mercy. They cried out to the creator of mercy. They know, they know who the one is that has mercy. And they cried out to him for mercy. And verse 14 says, so when he saw them, that's enough to make me shout right there. Just to know that when you are in an outcast situation, and when you are rejected and when you're on the outskirts of the city and when it's illegal for you to come around the rest of the crowd and when you got a sickness that no human can heal and when you are in a situation that nobody can help you it's good to know that if you cry out to him he'll see you y'all excuse me y'all missed a great place to shout right there. I need somebody here today who's feeling lonely and rejected and unloved and not feeling any mercy in your life. I'm here to tell you that if you cry out to him, he will see you. I don't care how low you fall into the ground, he'll see you. I don't care how habitual your habits are, he'll see you. I don't care what the diagnosis of the doctor is, he will see you. I don't care what they have said and how hopeless the situation is. Go on and preach, Pastor Jenkins. He will see you. They ain't going to give you no help up in here. Hallelujah. He'll see you. I 
Thank God that he's a God that can see you in the dark crevices of the room that you do your mess in. He's a God who will see you in your drunken stupor. He's a God who will see you in your high drug addicted estate. He is a God who will see you drowning in debt. He's a God who will see you no matter where you are. He will see you. He saw them. And the text says, he gave them instructions. I like that. In verse 14, it says, when he saw them, he said to them, verse 14, listen, go, show yourselves to the priest. It's a simple instruction. Go to the priest. It's a simple direction. Go to church. Go find the priest. Now there is a significance about this statement of going to the priest. You see, because when a leprous person, with a person with any kind of what was considered to be a communicable disease, when they found themselves in that condition, in order for them to be able to be declared able to go back into the culture and society, they had to be healed and that healing was validated by the priest. And so they went to the priest when they were healed, it has a step to be validated and approved by the priest to be able to be welcomed back into the culture. But the caveat was you could not come to the priest until you were healed. So he gave them some instructions that defied the common logic. They had leprosy, but they weren't supposed to go to the priest while they were in a still leper situation. They weren't supposed to go until they got healed. I wish I had a praying crowd with me here. But Jesus knew that if they just obeyed what he said, that by the time they got to the priest, your neighbor and say by the time you get where you're going just obey God and by the time you get where you're going do what he says by the time you get where you're going follow his word by the time you get where you're going it'll be all right together now I might not be where I'm supposed to be now but by the time I get where I'm going preaching to hallelujah y'all excuse me I feel like hollering by the time I get where I'm going I might not look right now I might look disturbed now I might look crazy now I might look ugly now look diseased now but I got a word from God he told me to just go in the right direction and somewhere while I'm on my way my healing is going to occur while you're on the move while you're headed in the right direction
Doesn't matter what public policy says. It doesn't matter what people say. Just follow his instructions. Somebody high five your neighbor, say follow his instructions. Tell them on the other side, follow his instructions. Tap somebody on their shoulder in front of you or behind you and say just do what he tells you to do. I know you're not supposed to do it. I know they say you're not supposed to go until you're healed. But don't wait till you get to healing. Go ahead and obey him now. Go ahead and do what he tells you now. Go ahead and walk down the road now. Can I get an amen? Can I, can I get somebody who knows what I'm talking about? Has anybody here ever went and did what God told you to do and God gave you a breakthrough? And the text says, and as they went, I'm sorry, and so it was that as they went. Hallelujah. Somebody about to experience a so has it was. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. That's what I came to tell somebody today. That's all. I'm about to sit down. I'm about to end this thing. I got to get y'all out of here, let y'all go home. I just came to tell you that while you obey God and do what he tells you to do, your healing is about to burst forth. You are about to experience the breaking of your day. You're about to have your miracle. You're about to have your victory as you do what he said do. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm. I like this guy who in the text says that one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he said, wait a minute. Let me go back and thank him. He was keen enough that while he was moving, he knew that he wasn't supposed to show up to the priest unless he was healed. So I believe in his heart, he believed that by the time he got to the priest, he was going to be healed. So he kept on checking. And while he was checking, all of a sudden his skin pigments got changed. Hallelujah! While you are going on your way, keep checking. <laughs> keep looking. Keep observing. Some of y'all never take the time to go back while you're on your journey and thank God for some of the things he's done for you. I suspect there's some miracles that he's done for you that you've never taken the time to say thank you for. I don't know where y'all are, but if I were to thank God for everything he's done for me, I would be praising him for all the days of my life. Hallelujah. But he's doing some stuff. This guy said, let me go back. He returned to Jesus. And I'm troubled by folk, and I know this is not y'all, but there's a whole lot of folk who come to church and get their deliverance, come to Jesus and get saved, and God fixes their life and fixes their family and fixes their marriage and fixes their condition and fixes their finances and fixes something in their life. Then all of a sudden, they develop amnesia. Now all of a sudden, now, now they don't have time for church no more. They used to go to church. But now all of a sudden, they ain't got time for church. But they had time when they were in pain. They had time when they were in drama. They had time when their marriage was about to go to hell. They had time when they didn't have no money. They had time when they didn't have a job. But now that they got what they need, they forget about God. This 
man came back. This man said, I'm going to come back and look what he did. He worshiped God. Hallelujah. Do y'all see that right there in verse number 15? And one of them, when he saw that he was sealed, returned. Look at here. And with a loud voice, glorify God. Y'all, excuse me. That's what some of y'all mess up. You too conservative. You're too quiet. You're too cute. You're too worried about what people are going to say about you. To hell with what people think about you. And open up your mouth and begin to give him a loud praise. Give him a loud shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With all that he's done for me, I'll give him a loud shout. I'll open up my mouth loudly. Now listen, here's what's amazing to me. The text says that he was a Samaritan. He wasn't a Jew. He was a mixed breed. Y'all excuse me, God is in the process of using mixed breeds. Y'all excuse me for a second. But that's another sermon, that's not for today. Somebody better get ready. It's a mixed breed day. He was a Samaritan. I'm trying to close this sermon, but y'all making me, y'all making me keep on preaching. He was a Samaritan, which means he wasn't supposed to know the law. He was an outsider who wasn't supposed to know the intricacies of the Jewish law. But he did what the Jews wouldn't do. Y'all excuse me for a second. Time after time, and place after place, and incident after incident, through all the scripture, it tells us to make a loud noise. Make a joyful noise. Make a loud sound. Over and over again, when the children of Israel had battle, they shouted a loud shout. When the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho, they made a loud shout. When Jehoshaphat got attacked, he made a loud shout. I'm trying to tell y'all, your breakthrough is when you learn how to make a loud noise. We ought to be a loud, bodacious people. We ought to open up our mouths and we ought to boldly declare that our God is a good God. And, oh, there's a place for quietness, but there's also a place for a loud sound. Can I give you a few quotes one more time to help me give God a loud shout, a loud thank you, a loud praise him. Hey! Let me tell you something, in light of all that God has done for you, you ought to give him a loud shout. Nobody ought to have to beg you, nobody have to ought to ask you, nobody should have to pump you up. We ought to come in here every week and every day with a loud noise in our mouth. I know you're not normally like that. I know you're normally conservative, but there comes a time in gratitude that you've got to extend beyond your normal temperament and open your mouth and say, hey! Hey, 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 hey. He opened his mouth, he fell to his face, and he gave thanks to God. That's why we're here today, to open our mouths and fall on our faces 
and give God thanks. I don't know where y'all are, but I thank him today. The other nine kept on their way, but not me. The other nine kept their mouth shut, but not me. The other nine, I don't know where they are, but it's not me. I'm gonna give God the praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his name. Wow! Hallelujah! Wow! I don't know where the other nine are, but here I am. <laughs> They be bothered about the other rascals, but here I am. Here I am, God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here I am to thank you. You don't have to beg me, God. You don't have to ask me. Here I am. Thank you. Forgive us for the things we did when we should have obeyed you immediately. Forgive us, God. over that anybody will ever again in church have to say to you open your mouth and give God praise make that declaration that no one will ever have to ask me to do that again for the rest of my life I don't care how difficult your situation is, he has done enough for us to come into the church 
and live our lives day by day with a praise on our lips. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for washing away my sins. Thank you for picking me up out of the muck and miry clay and setting my feet on a solid rock. Thank you that even while I'm going to where you're taking me, you are fixing the broken areas of my life. I'm not where I want to be, but I can thank God that I'm not where I used to be. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise. One more praise of adoration. We serve a Jesus. We serve a Savior who died on the cross. I'm done. We serve a Savior who was wounded for our transgressions. Nailed in his hands, nailed in his feet, pierced in his side crown of thorns on his head we serve a savior who died on the cross and was buried but he did what nobody else he wasn't the first person to be crucified but he was the first person to conquer death the only one and that's why we serve him and not Mohammed and not Buddha because he, he took the punishment for our sins died on the cross, was buried and rose again and I willingly give him my life. Somebody here today needs to willingly give their lives to Jesus. If you're not right with God, come, come on, just come on, meet, meet me right down here. We can introduce you to Jesus today. If you're backslidden and you need to rededicate, come on. Hallelujah. We can, we can get you reconnected today. If you're not sure, come on, we can help you get sure today. Come on. 